Welcome again, guys. This is verbatim number three that we're going to be reviewing um, as a wonderful learning tool. Again, a verbatim provided by one of my volunteers. Um, so let's get into it. Let me just share the screen. There we go. Okay. Let's start off. As usual, what we're going to do is we're going to read through the verbatim first and get a, a general gist of, of it. And uh, then we'll do a little bit of deconstruction. Okay, here we go. Hi, David. I'm Greg, a volunteer chaplain. Would you like a visit today? I remember you. Yes, that would be okay. How's things? Starting to improve. I'm very lucky to be in this ward as we all help and support each other. And with this comment, he looks to the patient across from him and brings him into the conversation. Gary's going home today after six months in hospital. Wow, that's great. Gary, you must be so excited. Yes, I've worked hard to get to this point. You never expect this to happen to you. I certainly didn't, but Gary has helped me to keep going and I'm so happy for him. We're going to keep in touch. That's so wonderful, such good support. Gary leaves the room. I'm really worried about my wife. Oh, I've been in here for so long and now she's had a cancer scare. I can't be there to help her from here. She has been such a support for me and now I can't support her. This has you really concerned. Yes, we only have each other as she had a female operation, which meant we could not have children. I was there for her then and I want to be there again. I just want her to be okay. It sounds like she's your whole world and it's a heavy load for you not to be there for her. True, we are lucky that we have the support of our church. You don't realize how many people care until you're in this type of trouble. My wife is getting help from them, which is so wonderful seeing I'm not there to help her. It's such a relief to know she's being supported by people who love her. It certainly makes me feel a lot better, that's for sure. The conversation at this point stopped because a physiotherapist came to see David. I'll keep you both in my prayers. Thank you for spending time with me. Okay, so that's the end of the verbatim. Let's go back to the beginning. The general gist, not too bad. Um, I certainly felt like our volunteer chaplain here did his best to really listen to what Greg was saying and try and connect with Greg and understand the impact of what it was like for Greg to not be able to be that rock, the man to in the marriage, in, in the relationship when he's, he's sick himself. You know, so many times a man feels that his identity has a large part to do with being the very backbone and foundation of the family. You know, when there's a problem, when there's a hurdle, he's expected to overcome it and be there, be the strength. But what happens when it's the man who's in hospital, when he's struggling, when he's the one that needs to, to be supported? It can be really difficult for a lot of men uh, to find themselves in a position of not being able to manage the household or not being able to be there for the wife. Um, and especially in this case where the wife was sick. So let's have a look at it. Straight off the bat, David um, is told that Greg is a volunteer chaplain and he's asked if he'd like a visit. That's really important. We always need to be respectful of people and ask if this is something they want. And if they say, no, thanks, I'm fine, then we go on our way. So Greg starts off very well here by introducing himself and providing a choice for the patient to say, whether or not they'd like a visit. But obviously here, David remembers Greg and says that would be okay. And so initially there's this little, in a sense, social conversation because um, a third person is introduced here, another patient, Gary, and obviously Gary has been a great support for David too while he's been in the hospital. And Gary's come to the end of what must have been a very a very difficult six months to spend in hospital. Um, you know, I can I can only imagine 
what my life would be like if I had to spend six months in hospital and all the things that I haven't been able to take care of and all the relationships I've missed out on. Um, even the activity of going for a walk every morning, which I really love, chances are that would not have been happening for Gary. So he's been through a, a, a real ordeal and that's come to an end. And of course, David's very happy for him. And so is David, the chaplain. That's great. You must be very excited. Well, that's an understatement. I'd be absolutely on top of the world to be walking away from the hospital. Okay. So once we get through this little interaction with the three of them, um, now that there's only the chaplain, Greg and David in the room, David opens up a little more about what's really on his mind at that time, which is his wife. And I really like C5. You see what a simple response that was? David says, I'm really worried about my wife. And there's a whole bunch of things that David could have said. Sorry, um, yeah, David could have said, but he doesn't. He just says, oh, and that creates the space and the room for David to really share what's been, been happening on his mind right now, which is, which is great. So when Greg just says a simple, oh, that's awesome. So David says, I've been in here for such a long time now. Um, and now my wife has a cancer scare and I can't be there for her. She's been such a su support for me and now I can't support her. So I sense that I, I can empathize with that. And here Greg picks up on the concern. OK, and I think this is you really concerned. It's a very short. It's a sweet response. It's letting David know that he's been heard and what this must be like, okay? So, I mean, again, for David, it could be scary, it could be overwhelming, it could be depressing, but here the chaplain is just giving an indication, I'm listening, I'm trying to understand, and so it's a short, simple, this really has you concerned. And, of course, David agrees, yes, and then explains a bit more. We only have each other, so there's no one else. Because of an operation that his wife had to have, there's no children, which means for these two, they're each other's world. And of course, he will feel like he wants to be with her and and he can't be right now. And he just wants to be okay. And the chaplain has a very nice response here. It sounds like she's your whole world and it's a heavy load for you not to be there for her. I think that's a really nice response. I think it's a very nice response. It sounds like for these two, you know what, they it's like they share the same heart. And when we're away from someone we're sharing a heart with, we really feel that. And and David's really feeling this. And it's like for David, she is his whole world, okay? Um, and that it's a heavy load for him as the man in the relationship for him not to be there to support her. This is a heavy load. So this is a really nice response, you know? You notice that what I like is here the chaplain doesn't say when David says, you know, I was there for her then and I want to be there again. I just want her to be okay. He doesn't say, look, she understands. It's okay. No one expects that of you. We can only do what we can do. It's your time now to be taken care of. You know, your wife knows this. Your wife understands. You see, there's no, there's no attempt by Greg to try and fix this. He's just trying to understand. It sounds like she's your whole world and, and it's such a heavy load, a heavy burden for you to not be there for her. You know, that's a really nice response. And he says, true, we're lucky that we have the support of our church. You don't realize how many people care about you until you're in this type of trouble. My wife is getting help from them, which is so wonderful, seeing I'm not there to help her. So David then shares that there is some relief. Yes, he has this burden. He has this very strong desire that he should be there to help his wife. Um, but isn't it wonderful that there are people in the church who are aware of this and who are supporting his wife when he's not able to? And, of course, this is what Greg says. It's such a relief. You see, it's such a relief to know that your wife's being supported by people who love her, not just being supported by 
neighbours, but by people who love her from the church, you see? And again, you know, no other options like, for example, you know, the, the chaplain here doesn't say, well, if for some reason the people at church struggle, we can make a referral for you in the community. No, he's not doing any of this. This is what I'm really liking about this verbatim from Greg. He keeps trying to simply listen and understand the impact, understand what this is like. He contains all of his own shared experiences, his own solutions, his advice. He contains all that. He doesn't say, I know when my wife was sick, it was really wonderful that we had the church to help. No, no, he doesn't do any of that stuff. And by containing all of those other elements, he keeps the focus on David. So David's just able to share what, what's on his heart and what's on his mind. And that's what David says. It certainly makes me feel a lot better, that's for sure. So it's providing David a lot of comfort, a lot of relief at a time when he wishes he could be there but can't to know that other people, the church people, for goodness sake, they're there, they're filling in the gap and, and supporting his wife. And, you know, this is another thing that happens in a hospital all the time. Sometimes we're interrupted, you know, whether it's a doctor, whether it's a nurse, whether it's one of the other health professionals, in this case, a physiotherapist. But the conversation now comes to an end. And the chaplain finishes with, I'll keep you both in my prayers, which is fine. And David says, thank you for spending time with me. So for me, I felt that the chaplain did a pretty good job in this. He contained all the elements of the social conversation. He, he listened. He tried to understand and convey to David what it must be like for you in this situation. You know, so I really I, I thought he did a great job. How do you think David would have felt after being visited by Greg? What did you like about David's approach? Was there anything you felt David could improve? Sometimes people will say, oh, I don't know if he hit the right intensity with the feeling. Well, that's okay. What are some alternative responses that you could have come up with? See, this is the beauty of verbatims. We have an opportunity to get a real life statement from a patient or a person and we get a chance to come up with three four five different responses you see and when i come up with a response that i think is really elegant really nice well i can just tuck that away in my memory because every time i'm with someone like this with a man for example who'd love to be there for his family but can't be i don't have to reinvent the wheel with my responses if i've used a response in the past that has really matched how someone's feeling and and conveying to them that I understand what this must be like for you, then I can use that response again. So it's really good practice to come up with multiple responses because there's a hundred different responses. There's no one right response. Try different responses. Try responding with different feeling words um, and see which one you know, resonates with you the best and tuck it away for a, a time later on. All right, guys, as usual, if you have a little conversation that you've written up, something meaningful that you've had with someone else, feel free to send it to my email and I'm happy to give you some feedback. If you'd like, I can put a video together on it. Like I say, these are great learning tools for all of us. Um, so, feel free, hit me up and I'll give you my feedback. Let me just stop sharing right now for the sign off. Thanks again for your time. I hope you're practicing the elements of the pastoral conversation. Please feel free to let me know in the comments um, what you're struggling with. I might have some tips for you in that area because I came to this to the pastoral conversation. I had my struggles. So let me know what you're struggling with. Let me know what you're finding easy to do. Um, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments. All right, guys. Thanks again for your company. God bless.